Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Sudha Goel and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from the Department of Civil Engineering of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part Environmental Chemistry will be covered by me. Uh, and the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by Professor Shudha Guel. So, uh, this is my module 3 and uh, this is my 13th lecture. Uh, in module 3, uh, I am discussing chemical kinetics and in this lecture that is the 13th lecture, uh, I will be uh, covering uh, the zero order reaction, first order reaction, uh, second order reaction and integrated law, rate law. Uh, I have already um, discussed about the rate uh, of a reaction and I have already discussed about the order and the rate constants uh, and the differential rate laws, uh, how we can apply differential rate laws to find out the order. Uh, in the previous lectures. Here, uh, I will uh, go into details about the integrated rate laws. Um, say for example, if we consider uh, this reaction, simple reaction uh, where A is the reactant and P is the product. Uh, say for example, this reaction is following zero order kinetics then from the rate expression we can tell that the rate is nothing but k into c to the power c a because it is here it is the reactant is a. So, c a to the power n this is the rate law rate law or rate expression um, and then uh, because it is a zero order reaction. So, we can write the uh, c a to the power 0. So, rate is nothing but minus d c a by d t into k into c a to the power 0 because zero order reaction. So, this is becoming 1, so it is k. So, from here we can tell that um, tell that zero order reactions uh, the rate is independent of the concentration of the reactant and here k is the rate constant that uh, or specific rate constant that I already discussed in the previous lecture. Okay. Um, now, in case of zero order reaction, uh, if uh, C to make it simplified, you know, DCA DT all the time to write DCA DT, DCA DT. So, it is A term if I uh, remove, I have removed the A term to make it little simplified. Okay. So, uh, we have seen from the previous uh, in the previous slide that the rate is minus DCA DT is nothing but K, this is for the zero order reaction. Now, uh, the uh, rate of change of concentration of A with time as I told already that this is the rate. So, rate uh, always will be expressed in, uh, in terms of mass um, per volume per time that also I told and it is up to you that how you will what units you will use for volume, what unit you will use for time and what unit you will use for mass. Uh, but the rate constant you see that in this case the uh, it is the same as the rate. So, for zero order reaction um, rate constant um, is expressed as the same uh, like the uh, same unit as uh, we express for rate. Okay. Now, integrated rate law it is uh, easier than the differential rate law to visualize and to apply. Okay. 
Now, if we uh, integrate this, uh, then we will get c is equals to minus k t uh, to change the sign here. Uh, so, k minus k t plus constant of integration. Now, the constant of integration also we can get by putting t is equals to 0. So, if we think that at t is equals to 0, c is equals to uh, c 0, then uh, we can get the c 0 is the constant of integration. Okay. So, this term is becoming 0 that is why c 0 is nothing but the constant of integration. So, by putting this one we get c minus c 0 is equals to minus k t. Okay. So, if we if we plot c versus t okay, then what how the curved nature will be. Uh, so, if we plot c um, versus t, t in the x axis and c in the y axis because it is uh, negative because uh, it is uh, the reagent reagent concentration. So, it will be uh, with negative slope ok, it will be negative slope and the the point where it is cutting it will be C 0 that is at t time t it is the concentration that is we have already told it is C 0 ok. So, 0 order curve will be like this if we pl plot if we plot C versus t ok. So, um, so what we can do oh, experimentally also we can do very simple way we will determine the concentration uh, we will start the reaction we will determine the concentration at different times then we will just plot it concentration we will plot um, versus t and then we will see whether it is following a linear plot or it is not following a linear plot. plot. This is this is easy, very easy. Now, uh, in case of first order reaction, in case this is the rate expression, we all know it is again it is simple most uh, most um, simple reaction we have considered. So, rate is nothing but k into d c a uh, c a to the power n, n is the order. So, when it is a first order reaction, so n is 1. Now, minus d c a d t is equal to k into c a. So, in this case you have to remember um, remember one thing that what is C A? C A is the concentration of A at any time T. So, this thing you have to remember okay? for any numericals you have to do or anything you have to um, uh, kinetic analysis you want to do you have to remember that C A is nothing but the concentration of A at an any time T. Okay? And Mm, now, uh, this a d t is the rate of change of concentration of A with time. So, this is the I already explained it uh, that um, rate is the rate has the unit mass per volume per time k has the unit you see here k this c a term c a means a concentration term will go away. So, it will be time inverse. Okay. So, k is the reaction rate constant which is nothing but the time inverse. Okay. This is very uh, important to remember for first order reactions okay. time inverse. Now, for first order reactions um, we know the rate expression is like this. So, um, here you can see that first order reaction proceed at a rate directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant. From the rate expression we get this thing, but this point is very important. Since the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of the reactant and the concentration of the reactant changes with time, okay. this is understandable rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of the reactant and reactant concentration is changing with time. So, an arithmetic plot of the variation in the concentration of the reactant with time does not give a linear response. So, figure 2. So, if you plot concentration versus time then you will not get the straight line curve if the curve will be like this okay, and the slope slope um, uh, will give you the at any point will give you the d c a d t with minus sign because it is the reagent okay, reactant. Now, the uh, 
Now, if we apply the integrated rate law, then on integrating this equation, we will get ln c 0 by c equals to k t or you can put it in log term also log c 0 by c is equals to k t by 2.3 or you can do this thing also log c you can plot versus t. If you plot log c versus t then you will get a straight line with slope negative because it is the reactant. So, it will decrease and the cutting point will be nothing but c 0. And if you plot ln c 0 by c here it is the log c okay, or ln c you can plot. So, you will get this type of curve with negative slope, but if you plot ln c 0 by c then you will get a straight then also you will get a straight line curve you can see here this is a straight line curve and it will uh, it will be with positive slope ok it will be a positive slope. So, so this is the integrated rate law for first order reaction. Now previous one we have seen that for the zero order reaction we have seen that concentration versus time this will give a straight line, but in case of first order reaction you will see that log or ln you have to plot versus time then you will get a straight line curve ok. This, this is the difference between the zero order and first order reactions. These are both are the integrated um, integrated rate law. Now, one thing is very important this is another example uh, it is shown instead of giving A and A is the reactant and P is the product here one, one reaction is shown actual reaction is shown it is a gas phase reaction nitrogen uh, N2O5 nitrogen pentoxide this is in gas phase it can decompose to nitrogen dioxide and oxygen and then the rate uh, of uh, this this decomposition of N2O5 you can write in this fashion and then here uh, instead of writing uh, 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 C N2O5 here it is only concentration term it is written um, to make it simple you can write that ln C0 by C is equals to KT that is already explained in the previous uh, uh, earlier ok just previous slide ok. Now, ln N2 by Ng N2O5 if you plot against time then you will get a, um, a, a straight line curve ok, a straight line curve because it is a fast order reaction. In this case I will explain let me explain that here you will get fast order reaction actually determined it is a fast order uh, reaction. At the same time you can see that the molecularity if we think about because I told you that reactions can be um, can be thought in two different ways one is the molecularity another is the order. So, in this case if you see the because only one molecule uh, of N2O5 is involved in the reaction uh, in the balanced reaction. So, here molecularity is also one. But, um, but molecularity is one here it is matching with the um, order, order is also one first order reaction and molecularity is also one it is uh, unimolecular reaction, but um, it, it may vary also that is the question uh, so, uh, means order, order and molecularity may not be the same, here it is same, but it may not be the same that you must remember. Now, one, one thing is very important for the uh, for the uh, first order uh, reactions what is that this is the half life ok. This is also very important for radioactive radioactive elements first. So, all the radioactive elements because they decay by in first order the reaction is first order the degradation is first order reaction that is why. Um, in that case uh, the radioactive elements are also characterized in terms of their half life. So, half life is very important for the uh, first order uh, reactions. Now, what is half life? Half life is always uh, expressed in terms of T half ok as T half. So, what is half, half life? Half life is the say for example, the original concentration is C ok. 
then the time that will be taken uh, uh, for uh, that reactant or for uh, radioactive element whatever may be. So, to come to its uh, half, half concentration means if you start with C, uh, C then how much time it will take to come to C by 2 that time period is known as half life. Okay. So, uh, in case of first order reaction we know that ln C, uh, C 0 by C is equals to k t. So, C 0 and then the with that time where it comes to C 0 by 2 if we put here C 0 by 2 then the corresponding t will be t half. Okay. We can we can tell that half life as t half. So, um, here it will come ln 2 C 0 by C 0 by 2. So, ln 2 and then k into t half. So, the value of ln 2 is nothing but 0 0.693. So, 0 0.693 by t half is equals to k. Okay. So, k is the specific rate constant uh, which is related to t half or other way you can tell t half is related to k. Okay. But, there is no concentration term here you can see that means, half life does not depend on the concentration, it is a very characteristic thing, okay. it does not depend on the concentration. That is why in radioactive elements also you will see when I will discuss about radioactivity then you will see that radium say for example, it has some particular half life, uranium it has some particular half life, it does not depend on the initial concentration, okay. it is a characteristic thing. Now, if you look into the into the um, curve that is the time in the x axis and the concentration of N 2 O 5 it is giving in the uh, considering the this example. Okay. So, you start with 1 if you start with 1 then uh, the uh, uh, then the half life will be that time that taken to come to 0.5. So, you have started with 1, so half of 1 is 0.5. So, to come to this concentration 0.15, how much time is taken? That is t half. So, this time is t half. Okay. Now, you start with 0 0.5. So, 0 0.5, half of 0 0.5 is 2.5. So, how much time it will take to come to 2.5? Corresponding to that, this time is t half. So, t half you have started from here to here next uh, second one. So, the here to here. So, this is the t half. So, if you consider from the 0 point then it is 2 into t half. Similarly, when you start with 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.25 that is here then half of this is 0.125. So, here. So, here again it is from here to here the time taken is again t half. So, if you consider from here it is 3 t half. Okay. So, like this it will continue like this okay. and it is first order type first order curve. Okay. So, uh, you can uh, means you can easily understand that how it goes okay. the, the degradation or decomposition uh, goes with time for, for, for half life period uh, means for, uh, for first order reaction. Now, second order reaction, second order reaction is also very common, uh, uh, many reactions are second order reactions. Okay, here you can see that 2 a the balanced, equa balanced equation is 2 a reactant a is the reactant p, here second order. So, here uh, molecularity also 2. So, by chance uh, molecularity and um, uh, order is same here. Okay. So, rate expression is uh, rate is uh, equals to k into C a to the power 2 because it is a second order reaction. Now, same way integration upon integration it gives 1 by C minus 1 by C 0 is equals to k into t. And here you can see that k k the unit reaction uh, rate constant the unit is this one. You can easily develop from that rate expression because rate you know this minus d c a d t or c a d t. So, concentration term here, here another concentration term to the power 2. So, 
k will be accordingly it will have this unit. Okay. Now, for the uh, second order reaction uh, this is a integrated rate loss. So, second order reaction if you plot 1 by c here in the y axis and uh, time uh, time uh, in the uh, x axis then you will get a straight line curve with positive slope the cutting point is 1 by c 0. Okay. So, in the first order rate uh, you have seen uh, we have to plot l n c or log c versus time to get a linear curve in case of 0 order c versus t to get a uh, to get a linear curve in case of second order uh, uh, second order reaction you have to plot 1 by c versus t and you will get a um, straight line curve. Um, so, the, uh, it is a very simple method actually to get to know the order of the reaction because you have the data set you have the data set at different time intervals you have collected some samples for a reaction and you have mono, you have measured the concentration of that particular uh, reactant or product whatever may be and then you make a table and then after making the table you just plot it you plot it uh, different plots you have to make okay different plots you have to make and then you will see which one is following the uh, straight line curve accordingly you can decide which one is the uh, order what is the order of the reaction now for a reaction this is an example uh, say here in this case in the previous examples we have shown only one reactant okay but here there are two reactants okay a is the reactant the molecularity is here the stoichiometry one another reactant is there this is the b so here the stoichiometry is one is two uh, two and giving a product okay if this is the case then how will you tell about the rate I have told you that rate uh, how you can express, but um, what about the order uh, how will be the order what will be the order whether you will determine in terms of A or B or both that is to be determined because some reactions you may just consider A and you can tell that ok this reaction is first order with respect to A. Okay, this reaction is second order with respect to B or you can tell that overall rate of the overall order of the reaction is 3. So, how will you tell it that is very important. Okay. Now, uh, the same thing in many cases the rate of a reaction depends on the concentration of two or more different chemical species the same thing um, so in that case uh, that i just i was explaining in the previous slide so in this case you see the rate is k this is the uh, specific rate constant ca to the power m and cb to the power n so you can tell that m and n do not you have to remember this that m and n do not come from the coefficients of the balanced equation okay it is not like m a plus n b giving product it is not like that it may happen like that but it is not like that okay they should be determined experimentally m and n should be determined experimentally from the above rate expression we can say that the reaction if you get this type of expression then you can tell that this reaction the considering that reaction is mth <coughs> order in in a and in it order in b you can tell that and the overall reaction order is m plus n a very nice example here you can see you can have the idea that it is the reaction of h2po4 minus and oh minus it is in aqueous phase reaction to give hpo3 2 minus and hydrogen hydrogen is a gas okay now experimentally it has been observed that the rate of the reaction is this one it is the rate expression h 2 p o 2 minus to the power 1 and o h minus to the power 2. But these two you see here it is 1 so, so you cannot means tell from just by seeing the uh, equation you cannot tell that 
it will be the what will be the order ok. Now, you can say how we can express we can say from this that this above reaction is first order with respect to H 2 PO 2 minus and second order with respect to OH minus. The overall reaction is 2 plus 1 that is 3. Accordingly, the unit of K you can easily find out. Okay. So, I think it is clear from these examples and this uh, um, how it is explained uh, you can now it is your choice whether you will um, use the differential rate law or you will use the um, integrated rate law and um, uh, to determine the order and whether you will determine the order with respect to something or you will determine the order with respect to both that means overall rea overall um, reaction you know, that is up to you that is up to you. Then how to know the order of the reaction in a real experiment? Real experiment how will you do it? I will show in the last lecture actual actual one experiment I will show uh, how you can determine the order, but these are all theoretically I am explaining to determine how to determine the order. Now, um, we start uh, before we start what the order of the reaction will be. Um, in a real experimental study, we do not know what is the order. Okay, um, so how we how we cannot speculate also. So how we will determine the order? Okay, in that case, we have to take the um, experimental data, experimental uh, observations. Uh, we have to find the data. We have to collect the data. After that, we have to try different plots: the zero order plot, first order plot, second order plot. We have to. Uh, 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 we have to get okay. after that depending on the which one is the best fit okay. uh, according to that you can tell okay, this reaction is having this order. Okay. So, this way we have to determine okay. this uh, integrated rate law and uh, differential rate law and how to determine the order all those things that has been discussed here uh, in this lecture uh, you can get from the same book that I already uh, have mentioned uh, in previous lectures. Okay. So, you can easily get uh, and this is very uh, uh, very nice book uh, both the books are very nice. So, thank you, thank you very much.